One of the biggest puzzles has been the several hundred years of what's known as the Little Ice Age, which ended in the mid-19th century and started, well, no one's sure when or why. Now, though, a new study has come up with a date and a cause, and I'm joined on the line from Boulder by its author, Gifford Miller, Professor of Geological Sciences at the University of Colorado. Uh, Gifford, prior to your work, what did we know about the Little Ice Age? What we discovered, uh, based on some early work by Canadian geologists, is that ice caps in the Canadian Arctic often act instead of as erosive agents, like you usually think of them, they actually preserve things. And what they preserve is the plants that were living when the conditions got colder. And what we've done is to go to um, several hundred of these, extract the plants that are still rooted in their growth positions and date them, and they tell us the time when the ice grew and never melted again. So we've been able to, for the first time, date the start of the cold phase. And what, what date have you come up with? Well, we found that the, the, the start was actually quite abrupt. It wasn't a gradual cooling, and the initial stage happened in the late 13th century, between 1250 and 1300, and then there was an, an expansion of the cold around 1450 A.D. Okay, but this, so let's say you've got this date. How do you know what was going on in the Canadian Arctic applies to what was happening over in Europe? Yeah, so one of the questions is, is this just a local signal or not? And so from that, we made a prediction uh, using the start of the cold, what ice caps should be doing elsewhere. And we went to Iceland, where we were able to get a very precise record of the size of the ice caps in Iceland. And we predicted that when the cold starts, we should see a centennial expansion of those ice caps. And, and that prediction was satisfied with the evidence we found from lake sediments in Iceland. Right. That, so this that is told us it was a... It was a North Atlantic phenomenon we were looking at. Right, so a classic scientific way. You, you go from what you found, you then make a, a hypothesis and a prediction, and then you check out if the data matches it. Now, there have been previous attempts to explain how the Little Ice Age started. I mean, notably that it was due to a, a decrease in sunspot activity. How do your dates fit in with those sort of theories? Yeah, so the longest period when, when there's very few sunspots is the Maunder Minimum, which is well after. It's in the six, early 1600s, and so it's pretty clear the Little Ice Age started well ahead of that. Now, the sun's a powerful driver, so it probably has a role, but the onset certainly wasn't triggered by that. Okay, so if it wasn't that, I know this is separate from discovering when the dates are, but do you have an idea what is the likely uh, thing that got the uh, snowball rolling? Well, what, what we noted when we compiled these data that these two periods of very cold summers when the ice grew coincided with the two most volcanically perturbed half centuries of the last thousand years. So it's the classic smoking gun, if you will, that